I'm going to hit that hay so hard, I'll break all the windows in Los Angeles. Sure was one dull trip, not even a flat tire. Hey, ain't you going to shift into low? I want to get rid of this elephant fast. Me too, but what about the regulations? Rule 4 says that all drivers in the employ of this company must, on pain of instant dismissal, shift into low gear when on a downgrade. Not little Stevie when he's on his way home. That was written by an office driver. You got 26 tons of barbed wire pushing you. The harder it pushes, the faster we get home. All right, mister, you're driving. Grab your hat. Funny, huh? There's a company spotter around here. We'll both get booted right out of our jobs. Let them boot. I'll open that garage I've been planning. They can boot me right into a nice soft bed. I got a week's sleep coming. A nice, dirty garage. Guys hammering on fenders, spraying grease all over everything. That's the light. Well, there's your spotter. Well, maybe I'll get me a special built bed. That's it, a special built bed with springs like a Swiss watch and mattresses piled three deep, one on top of the other. Hey, you guys. When you own a garage, you're a real human being, not a monkey on a pile of traveling canned goods. With your stomach full of bad coffee and your nose full of rocks. Listen here, you guys. Hello, friend. Bill, I want you to meet the man that's going to free us. Mr. Purvis? Mr. Uh, what do you say your name is? Welcome, brother, welcome. You had it up to 65. 72, 72 right on the dot. You can't get away with that, you're fired. Thanks, thanks. What'd you say your name is? Thanks, brother, thanks. <laughs> See you at the freight depot. Yes. No, you're through right now. Get out. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't get no truck unless you sign a receipt for it, my good boy. Receipt? What do you mean? How do we know you ain't a crook trying to hijack us? You won't tell us your name. Yeah, and you might have stole that company cab. That's right, he's got mean little eyes. I don't trust him. Come on, come on, come on sign, sign. Yeah, that's all right. Frank, take this thing in. Come on, come on. What is this? Drive slowly and carefully, please, and drop us off at Riley's Cafe. Forward, my man. Ah, go on, boy. Still on that gravy hole, Jake? No, I'm doing goat jumps. Hey, Kennedy, that Hessling in Monterey's looking for you. Tell her I got run over. Seven crates of shoes for Goldberg store, plowing a disc car for the Hobart Ranch, 600 pounds of spuds for the CCC camp, what became of them sardines? Hey, you ain't stole that fish. What do you think I am, a seal? She gave it to me for good luck. Well, how is it working? This trip we had four flat tires, a ticket in Ventura, and landed up in a ditch. Throw it away before you get killed. No, I want to give it a chance. Hey, what do you do, drink beer for breakfast? Yeah, and orange juice for supper. That's the trucking business. It's hardly human. No, but it pays good. The line in your stomach holds out, you'll be rich. Hiya, Kennedy. Hello, Hi. Jake. Hello, boys. Hiya. Now, you guys are early. Congratulate us, boys. We're fired. Fired? No kidding. What happened, Steve? Spotter catch him? No, nope, we caught a spotter. And we told him what he could do with his truck, barbed wire and all. And did he burn? <laughs> if I don't know how much fun it was, I'd have quit years ago. What are you going to do now? I'm going to hibernate like a groundhog and come out in the spring and look for my shadow. From now on, I'm going to be a gentleman my feet on the ground, not a punch-drunk gorilla on wheels, pushing a jalopy load of a junk up a mountain and across cactus flats. Well, oh, fella's got to earn a living. Sure, but jockey in a crate ain't living. I'm going to be a businessman, open up my own garage, wear a stiff collar on Sundays. You'll be back in the trucks. They're in your blood. Not mine. I've got a few hundred bucks saved Coffee, up. And... please. I mean, when you ride the trucks, you can't even meet your girl like a normal person. It's got to be 8 a.m. instead of p.m. Who can make love at breakfast? Now, there's a girl that knows what I'm talking about. She's smart. She wouldn't have anything to do with a guy who spends his nights traveling. Or any other guy she doesn't know. Of course, now that I'm going to open up my own garage... Thank you. ...live like a gentleman... Some sugar, please. I'll have more time for a pretty little girl. And some cream. 
Girls appreciate ambition and personality and, uh, ask me to sing. Huh? Ask me to sing, you sap. Oh, sing, yeah. Uh, hey, Steve, how about giving up? Oh, well, you know, not in front of all these people. I, uh, ask me louder. Hey, Steve, how about a song to celebrate our quitting the trucks? Well, uh, if all you men insist, sure. Danger ahead. You're out of luck if you drive a truck and the darn thing runs amuck. Danger ahead. It's up and go and you never know when you're gonna need a tow. Like Jack and Jill, it's up the hill and down the hill and then just when you think you've earned the rest, you've got to roll again. No brakes, no clutch, no spare, too much. You think you're driving the truck. But the truck is driving you crazy, don't get me wrong. I like the feel of a spinning wheel and I'm really well content rolling along. I like to load and I like to haul and besides it pays the rent. I'm known in every coffee pot in half a dozen states. I have to put myself to sleep by counting license plates. I want my bed. Instead, we're heading for danger ahead. Merrily we roll along, roll along, roll along. Merrily we roll along. On a Sunday and a Monday and a Tuesday and a Wednesday. Don't get me wrong. I like the fog and I like the rain and I'm really well content rolling along. I like to load and I like to haul and besides it pays the rent. There's only me and my jalopy and we're awfully proud. We never bother with the girls cause three would be a crowd. Oh, I want my bed. Instead we're heading for danger ahead. Pardon me. You know a driver named Steve Hackett? Sure. Right over there. Thank you. Well, if you ask me, Stevie, you're slipping. Just give me time. Pardon me. But you're Steve Hackett? Yeah, I'm Hackett. Why? I'd like to speak to you privately. What for? It's very important. Whatever it is you're selling, I don't want any. This is important, Mr. Hackett. Say, what's your racket? You're going to take a load to Indian here tonight. You're crazy. I quit. Haven't you heard? It's in all the headlines. Steve Hackett quits the trucking business. Hey, that's some pup you got there. Oh, you're new around here, ain't you? Listen to me. You're taking a load to Indian here tonight. Thousands of lives may depend upon the trip you're going to make. I want you to... Say, who are you? That's not important. What is important are the lives at stake. And did you get that load to Indian head on time? I don't get it. What is this song and dance you're trying to give me? I can't tell you. Because the word got out, it might cause a panic. We've got to keep it absolutely secret. Even the police can't be told. Sounds like a lot of baloney to me. What have I got to do with it? Hey, you don't go for me much, do you? I want Take to warn you. Wait a minute. I ain't gonna... Lay off, monkey. What do you think you're cutting? You! handy guy to have around. Never had better service in my life. Hey, how'd you like to work for us? Why, you... You're hired. Drive us through the park, will you? If the boss didn't want to see you guys, I'd drive you straight to a police station. The boss? What does he want with us? We're not high hat. We don't have to be fired by the president. No, any mug will do. Even you, sonny. Go on, drive us, drive us, drive us. of the West Coast freight lines who travel the arteries of commerce 
bringing the light blood of materials to the cities and culture to the little back communities. We are the modern heirs of the prairie schooner, the Pony Express and the Iron Horse. To some, the trucking business may appear as a humdrum matter of cabbages and sealing wax. But to us who follow the great highways, it is an ever surprising adventure, a saga of heroic deeds. To us, it's 50 bucks a week. Yeah, 25 of it goes for soap and we're never clean. Mm. Although history may never record the exploits of the brave men who guide our trucks, to those who know them, who know of their courage and their loyalty, no soldier, be he Napoleon or Wellington, will evoke more admiration. Some spiller, huh? Yeah, when I get my garage, I'll put him in charge of the greasing department. <laughs> and now, gentlemen, although your records are none too good, in fact, are full of fines and broken regulations, I recognize you as two of my bravest employees. Ex-employees, Mr. Davis. We don't work here anymore. Evidently, I haven't impressed you with the seriousness of the mission I want you to undertake. What kind of mission? There's a thousand dollar bonus in it for you if you get a truck to Indian Head on time. Indian Head? Where did I hear that name before? I don't know where you heard that name before, but I know where I've heard of a thousand bucks. The load is at the dock waiting. I got it. That guy in Riley's. Say, what is this Indian Head gag anyway? What are we carrying? Lettuce. What's the matter? Are they all on a diet? Steve, for a thousand bucks, I'd carry a load of fertilizer. Let's go. With an emergency job like this, you'd think those guys would make sure the motor was working right. Hear that loose tappet? Oh, that won't hold us up. I'll fix it the first time we stop. Hey, what's the matter, Steve? Aren't you enjoying the romance of the road, the glamour of the trucking business? I was just thinking, that Davis is no fool. I'm not so sure about that. All the lettuce in this trucking worth a grand. That's what's bothering me. I should have listened to that guy that wanted to tell me something in Riley's. Ah, he was just a nut. Maybe so. He knew we were going to take a load to Indian Head before we did. Maybe he read it in the tea leaves. You know, these fortune teller guys get awful good sometimes. I wonder if there's anything in that stuff about thousands of lives. Sure, we're just like Lindbergh carrying the serum to Alaska that time. Yeah, only we're taking lettuce in a truck. Well, maybe a new disease broke out. That's it, they're dying like flies. For the want of a lettuce and tomato sandwich. Hey, look! It's like that romance part at the beginning. Let's see what he's hauling. Come on. Here they come. Yeah, and there goes our thousand bucks. Come on. Hey, what's the big idea? What are you carrying? Lettuce. That's fine. We're stopping all lettuce trucks as a strike on. But we've got ah, to get come through. Come on, we'll have hey, it. You guys can get through. Get them. Get them. Get Nope, that's dynamite. Get on that truck and get out of here fast. We'll be seeing you. Not if we can help it. You scaring those guys with that dynamite gag? That was no gag. Well, I ought to know a Roman candle when I see one. I set off enough of them last Fourth of July. Psst. The box they threw over blew up, didn't it? You mean to tell me we're carrying 26 tons of dynamite? Ooh, and for a thousand bucks. That guy Davis is a crook. Welcome to Lizard. 
my friend. <laughs> Thanks, Jay Carroll. Can we fill up? Yeah. Visit Springs is located midway between the North and South Magnetic Pole. This scientific fact makes... Uh, this scientific fact makes Lizard Springs a place where those suffering from the nervous disorders of the big city can obtain their perfect equilibrium through the pressure brought to bear by the North and the South Pole. As soon as the necessary financing can be arranged by my bankers, a city of delightful homes and gardens will arise on this spot. A beautiful casino with games of chance, where he who will may risk his fortune at Bagarac or Shaman de Fair. Romantic bridal paths will wind their leisurely way beneath beautiful old oaks. Tennis courts. How much? Too much. 25. Every convenience that the heart or mind might desire. Luxuries that only the mind of a Nero could conceive. Will be provided by J. Caramelloy. Hasn't he got any relatives or anything? They probably bought him the station. But don't get J. Carroll Malloy wrong. They're the fellows that built this country. First thing you know, we'll have to detour around Lizard Springs. Yeah. See if there's anything about Indian Head in the paper. Yeah, maybe we can find out what the dynamite's for. Here it is. Doings in Indian Head. Read it. Miss Sophie Burgess of Ottsville brought some tulip bulbs as a gift to her brother-in-law, Jake Burgess, who has quite a garden in back of his barber shop on Main Street. Hope they all grow like orchids, Jake. Jake isn't going to use dynamite to make holes for those bulbs. Mrs. Frank Glotz, wife of the eminent taxi... Taxidermist? No, oh, it must be taxi driver. And hardware man expects a baby soon. That's wrong, too. Well, yeah, they're all like that, Indian. Nothing makes any sense. There's a guy with a date. Sunday driver. Monday funeral. He stopped it anyway. Yeah. Stop! Stop! Mama, that man's here again. This time I'm going to listen. I'm going along to make sure you get the Indian head. Move over. Wait a minute. Just who are you and what's this all about? We're wasting time. I'll explain as we go along. Be careful, if they hit this dynamite, it's too bad. If we can make the next turn, we'll be all right. Oh, I'm not worried, Steve. Maybe the whole thing's a gag. They don't have to kill a guy to play jokes on us. It's not that hard to make laugh. You know, I think I got a clue. Maybe that guy Davis is sorry about the thousand bucks he offered us and is doing all this stuff to try to keep us from collecting it. Take your nap, will you? What worries me is the quiet. We passed over a lot of bridges and they didn't even blow up. Hey, those guys are criminals. We ought to tell the cops. That's what I'm going to do when we hit the next town, if we hit it. We've got 40 miles of desert first. Why don't you get some sleep? Oh, I'm afraid I'll have a nightmare. Hey, what's that car doing up ahead? Where? I mean, it's a plan. You're right. Why should a car stop around here? There's nobody behind the wheel. Probably crouched down in the back seat. You gonna run by? No, that guy hit us through the window, sure. Hang on. There wasn't anybody in it. Oh, yes, there wasn't. Boy, is she sore. She? Uh oh You clumsy fool, you ruined my car. Well, if it isn't, say, what are you doing here? It's a free country, isn't it, or do I have to get your permission before I travel on this road? Oh, well, I'm sorry about your car. I thought that... Uh... You're sorry. You deliberately ran into my car, and you're sorry. 
Well, it was a mistake. Roadhog? Well, you were parked out in the middle of the road. Well, I suppose it's my fault. Well, not exactly, well, but... Well, thanks. I'm trying to explain that this isn't an ordinary trip we're making. We've got to get that load to Indian Head. Thousands of lives depend upon it. There aren't a thousand people in that town. There aren't, huh? Well, I can't figure it out myself, but it's the truth. There are guys trying to stop us that won't hesitate at anything, even murder. That's why we ran you down. We thought it was an ambush and we... How do you expect people to believe that story? You're crazy. No, it's the truth, you see. Oh, well, what's the use? We're sorry and the company will pay for the car. You bet they will. And you're going to jail. Well, wait till we finish the trip. I know you don't believe it and it sounds crazy, but give us a chance. Anyway, what were you doing parked out in this deserted spot? The last time I saw you, We'd you... We stopped for coffee. Well, we didn't spend the day there and we got this far and then Butch wanted to stop. Butch? Is that Butch? Yes. Now, well, come on, we'll give you a lift. Oh, no, you won't. I won't ride with lunatics. Come on, we can't let you stay out here. Well, that's just what you're going to do. Oh, let her stay here. I'm afraid to. Somebody will give her a lift and she'll tell the cops. It'll take hours to explain to a yokel sheriff. And we'll never get there. Come on, put her in. All right, all right. Ouch, let me go! Let oh, me give go! Give me a minute, let shut me... up. Let Now, listen, lady, be reasonable. Reasonable? We don't mean you no harm. Do we look like a couple of thugs? Yes. I know our story doesn't sound so good, but it's the truth, and you've got to believe it. What I believe is that you escaped from an insane asylum and stole this truck, and I'm going to make you suffer for it. Don't do that. You'll give him a disease, dog poisoner. Now, look, lady, we're just riding along here nice and quiet. Please don't... We'll pay for the car. After all, an accident isn't a crime. No, but kidnapping is. You see that? Well, when we crossed that line, it became a federal offense, and, and that means hanging. Oh, relax. All right, then have it your way. We're thieves, kidnappers, murderers. And dog poisoners. See if you like this better. How do you expect people to believe that story you told me? All we want is a chance to prove it's true. Don't make any trouble until we've delivered this load and you can have us arrested to do anything you want. Otherwise, we'll have to gag and tie you. Oh. All right. Promise? Well, that's better. Now, you can smile, little girl. You're riding with a couple of regular guys. Everything's going to be all right. Come on, smile. Don't you want me to sing, too? Well, if you got a nice hot number, why not? Sure, I'll bet you'd be awfully nice. Thanks, but not riding on top of a load of dynamite. Dynamite? How do you know we're carrying dynamite? You told me yourself. I don't remember that. Well, you did back there on the road. Maybe I did. Well, that's why I didn't believe your story. What does Indian Head want with tons of dynamite? We don't know. All we know, lady, is that we get a thousand bucks reward if we get there on time. That's what makes us so sure it isn't a fake must want that thousand awfully badly. We do. He's going to buy a garage and I'm going to get some sleep. It isn't only the money. We're trying to do a job. People's lives are at stake. I suppose you'd do it even if there were no reward. Yeah. Lady, underneath that rough exterior beats the heart of a... a boy scout. Well, from what I've heard, it beats pretty feebly. Hey, those guys again! Nope, it's a flat and it's your turn. Can't we make her do it? Sure, I'll hold the truck up while you put the wheel on it. Well, pull up under those trees. I'm going to need some shade. Hello, boys. Anything wrong? Oh, no. We do this just so guys like you will stop and ask fool questions. I don't think you've got that jack set up right. I was watching them over Slim's garage, and I seen the Will way they go... Will you get out of here? Whoa, no offense, mister. Kind of hot work, ain't it? Yeah, I could use a cold drink. You could use one. Say, the next joint we hit, I'm going to get a beer a mile high, and on the company, too. You'll hit one a little down the road. All right, mister, thanks. Oh, that's all right. So long. Thanks for not squealing, kid. Oh, boy. Come on, come on, come on. You 
better watch the truck. I'll bring you your beer. Root beer, please. Two beers, not root one to take out. You always take him with you? Yes, he likes me. You know, they tell me those dogs are pretty smart. Well, happy landings. Good, huh? You turn it on and off like he does that beer tap, don't you? What? That woman stuff. But don't get me wrong, I like it. Well, you keep that man stuff going all the time, don't you? Sure, but I'm honest. The quiet, out-of-doors type. I don't hide my feelings. Like Tarzan, huh? Well, try hiding him once in a while. It would be less monotonous. I wouldn't know how. I'm bluff, hardy, slow to anger, but like a tiger when aroused. You know the type? Yeah, I've seen them in the zoo. I hope you haven't slipped anything into my beer. Hello, Sheriff. Hello, Hank. Out looking for crooks, Sheriff? Yeah. Come on, let's get out of here. Sheriff, I'm being kidnapped. What you said, what's this all about, young lady? They deliberately ran into my car and forced me to go with them. It's a mistake. Somebody's trying to stop us from getting to Indian. That's enough, young man. Did you force this girl to ride in your truck? Well, yes, but it was... Save it for the judge. Go get the guy on the truck. Okay, Chief. Let me call my boss. You call him later on from the police station. Come on, get going. You too. Nice going. I only promised because you made me. Yeah. What is this, a stick-up? They're the law. She told them we tried to kidnap her. I hope you made her pay for her own drink. Go on, get in the car, all three of you. At least let me call my company so they can pick up their truck. You can do that later on. Hank, yes, sir. drive the truck down to the police station. All right, sir. Make them give you receipts, Go Steve. on, go on. Listen, who's that guy you turned the truck over to? You've got no right I to... I just made him a deputy. Forget it. Well, if your story's straight, nothing will happen to you. Say, where is this police station? Oh, just a couple miles down the road. This road don't lead nowhere. Well, it's a shortcut. To what? What are you sheriff of? That's enough out of you, young fella. Let me see your badge. Sure. Here's my badge. Sheriffs don't carry automatics. Well, this one does. Oh, we're hijacked, huh? That's enough out of you, too. Nice crowd you go with. But they are police. Don't give me that baby stare. You're working with them. All right, you've won. But tell me, what do you want with that dynamite? What's it for? Why all the rust up to get it? Listen, wise guy. I told you to shut up. Well, shut up or you'll get hurt. Bad. Don't they know a fuse won't set it off? Why, it wouldn't even go off if... Not much it won't. Now stop so we can get rid of her. It'll take another stick of dynamite for that. Please, I didn't know they weren't officers. Don't make me get out with them. I don't believe you. But it's the truth. I didn't believe you either. Don't make me get out with them. Take me to a town. All right. Swing left, we'll hit the highway. Ah, it belongs to that circus we saw the other side of Lizard Springs. What are you going to do now? That's our business. We ought to call the office. Yeah, stop at the next gas station. You're going to have a lot of fun telling Davis about this. I know. You have a telephone? Yep, right around there. Sure is tough on him. I'd have just blown the dough in, but he really wants that garage. I guess it's my fault. 
But really, I had to... Ah, dame's a dame. You're all alike. I don't suppose he'll ever forgive me. Don't worry. He won't. Hello, West Coast. This is Steve Hackett. Let me talk to Mr. Davis, please. Mr. Davis, please. Hello, Mr. Davis. This is Hackett. I just wanted to tell you that... Remember that loose tappet in our motor? Yes. Sure, it tapped all the way out. So did the motor in that truck that just passed. Well, that's it. Come on, let's get him. Something hit me, boy. Well, you got them both, huh? Yeah. Nice going. Where's the dame? She's probably hiding out around here somewhere. What do we do about it? Ah, uh, let's leave her with her pals. Okay, let's roll. I guess that's what Davis meant by romance of the road, huh? Yeah, and he can have it. Boy, I thought for a minute, when that guy hit me, I was going to get my long sleep right then and there. You're not safe yet. We still have 110 miles to go. I wonder what their next move will be. How do I know? Well, we got rid of that dame anyway. I wonder if that was a mistake. kind of like that dog of hers, but we're not going back for either one of them. She was an awfully good-looking gal. Ah, looks in a dame don't mean nothing. I saw one's picture in the paper just a week ago. Boy, she was a honey. Eyes like oysters and dimples you could sink a dime in. You know what they pinched her for? For killing 15 guys and one of them was her own man. There's still some questions I'd like to ask her. We're not going back. You don't have to. How come you didn't shoot us in the back? I haven't got a gun. Well, you probably got a knife about you. Come on, get down here. Butch, how can you live with a woman like that? But I thought they were real police. Yeah, you guessed this truck had dynamite in it. But I did... Don't I... try to alibi anything. We're not that dumb. You're in this thing 100%. But what I want to know is why. But I'm not. All right, then. If you want to keep on lying, the only reason we're letting you stay in this truck is to keep you from starting anything else. And you're not getting out of here until this load's been delivered. on me, too. I wouldn't put it past you. Some load we're carrying for this kind of weather. Wish I knew where we could pick up a lightning rod. Why don't you steal one off a barn? You're giving me an idea. We'll stop in at Garsh's. This barn's covered with lightning rods. It's 
sit there and wait for the cops to find us. They'll never think of stopping at Garsh's. We hope. Well, if you'd rather ride this crate of fireworks through an electrical storm, keep rolling. Mary and I will follow you later. All right, any old barn in a storm. Your truck will be safe in the barn, Stevie. Well, what's the fiesta for, Garcia? Maybe because it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because we like the fiesta. Maybe today is somebody's big day. It's a night in America, then in China. Oh, 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 oh. La muchacha que quiere a vos es sin duda muy fecunda. Si una vela se le apagará, lo tan le queda encendida. Me persiguen los camioneros que me ofrecen su you don't have to understand Spanish to know what she's singing about. Tan solo quiero su dinero. Oigan esta canción que les canto con ilusión. Oigan, oigan esta canción que les canta mi corazón. Sweetheart, how about a rumba? Una rumba caliente. <laughs> you just watch me, boy. What for? Nobody ever watches a man in a rumba. <laughs> Well, I was wondering how you'd fit in the garage. Tell those men we're not here. But, senor, the police, what you do, Steve? Well, uh, we're hoping. Her father sent them. Oh. 
I'll make that exchange any time, sweetheart. Everything's all right. Come on, quick. We're looking for a couple of guys in the daytime. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is there anybody here who speaks English? Yes, I do, senor. Yeah, we're looking for a couple of truck drivers. Nobody here like that. No, Wait a minute, wait a minute. What is this? She's drunk, senor. Pay no attention. Well, are they here or not? Not. I saw a man down the road, said he saw a truck driving in this direction. Well, maybe he was drunk, senor. We're very sorry, senores. There's no one here for us, me, Carlos. See, that's all of me, Carlos. Well, all right. Come on, let's go. Bueno, adios, eh? Pasa one of the Have they gone? Si. I'll fix him, Steve. Well, Garcia. Uh, where is the bride? Oh, yes, the bride, yeah. What is this, Steve? Love. Huh. We have a saying in Mexico, a woman and a dog and a walnut tree, the more you beat him, the better they be. Ah. <laughs> You've got something there, Garcia. Come along, darling. Many years of happiness. Congratulations, Tony. Yes, Ross. congratulations. I'm sure you'll be very, very happy. Are you sure they're gone? At 60 miles per hour. Come on, we gotta get out of but here. But now we got rid, rid, and fiesta. Now stay, yeah? Hey, hey, sure. Bye there. On the way back, Garcia. You don't think this way will wash the road out of here, do you? Not the road, senor, but the dam. I don't know. Dam? What dam? Got the Indian head up up here. Indian head? Is there a dam there? There was one. If these new rains don't make it go poop. Why should they dynamite a dam that's already about to burst? I don't know what you're talking about. I think differently. Thanks, Garcia. No! What are you going to do, get an annulment? Don't speak to me. You make her angry. I make her angry. You're no soothing, Sheriff. As long as they think we're ahead of them, they'll keep going. Oh, they know how fast this crate goes. They'll check up on the mileage and turn around. Now we have to push on. There's nothing else we can do. Oh, I wish I had a nice dry bed. Another three hours and we ought to be in Indian Head. It doesn't start raining again. Well, we shook those guys anyway. They ought to be miles from here by now. Maybe. You give me the creeps. I got them to give. What are you going to do about that? I don't know. I can't figure her out. You mean you ain't going to have her hung? I may try to reform her. Listen, boy, I tried that reform gag once. I married the dame. You know what she did? What? She dressed my best friend in my best suit, ran off with him in my car, and took my dime bank along for expense money. Without my car, I couldn't go to work. I got fired without my suit. I couldn't go out to look for a job, and without my dime bank, I put in a start to this. <laughs> Have a good sleep? Huh? No. Look, lady, it's cold enough in this cab. Will you warm up a little bit? She's a bad loser. Hey, what's this? More trouble, huh? Well, I'm not going to stop. You must. Stop! Stop! I need help! I suppose this is another one of your friends. Let's hear what he has to say. You've got to help me. My wife's dying. Where is she? By the side of the road there. She's in terrible pain. She's dying. Ah, we've heard those funny jokes before. Come on, let's get out of here. Please, lady. We've got to help him. Come on. This better be on the level. Is she in there? Yes. She must be pretty bad. Cheer up, he'll be all right. Are you all right? Yeah. Your truck don't look so hot. Must have been the rain washed the supports under the bridge. Mm, maybe. We'd had a lot of fun if we hadn't stopped back there. You don't think the rain washed out those timbers? Do you? We'll come up and yank you out. Thanks. There's another road a mile back. We can get around that way. Swell.
everything all right? Yes. What was the matter with her? Well, why not? We're in the delivery business. And everybody else, too. <laughs> Been some tip. I never want to make another one like it. Not even to be a godfather? Nope, not even. Gee, I was glad we came along just in time to help them. Yeah. I never knew a guy could fall so hard for a dame that being cold and tired and hungry meant nothing. They were so darn happy with that baby. You know, I was thinking. What? That sometimes two perfectly honest people hurt each other by trying to do what they both think is right. I guess so. I don't want you to feel that I'm... What? Oh, let's talk about the garage. I'd rather talk about us. Not now, please. Look, I can tell a cop off. I know a lot of words for that. But I don't know the words for what you make me feel. I... I'm not very good at it either. Hey, look out! <laughs> She's up to her old tricks, trying to wreck us. Hey, since you two have gotten as friendly as all that, why don't you try to find out what we're making this trip for? Yeah, how about giving us a lowdown on this dynamite stuff? What's the difference? You'll find out soon enough. Anyway, you've won. But what have we won? This is the funniest card game I ever sat in on. We don't know what cards we're holding or what stakes we're playing for. We're playing for our homes and our ranches and everything we've got in the world. What's this load of dynamite got to do with that? Remember what Garcia said about the Indian head dam going out? Well, if they blow those emergency locks, we valley people will lose everything we've got. In other words, we're the heavies. Ah, oh, it's just another trick. She couldn't get away with trying to hijack us, so she's going to turn on the tears. Well, it won't work, baby. It won't work. Okay. You win. I'd be so glad to see a freight depot. 
Oh, where's Joe Devlin? Hi, uh, Joe's working nights now. Oh, I'm Hackett from Los Angeles. Yeah, I've been expecting you, Hackett. Here's one slip we're sure glad to get signed. Now for some breakfast. Eggs, bacon, hot cake, coffee, how does that sound? All right, I guess. Oh, don't be a bad loser. The next time I'll let you win. Did you have a good trip? Awful. What's the matter, engine trouble? No, but everything else. Where's the sheriff's office? Why, down at the end of Main Street. What do you want with him? I want to report a murder. Murder? Yes, whoever was trying to stop us killed a guy who wanted to warn us. Steve, I never thought... Shut up. What is this? Steve, you've got to believe me. That'll I be didn't... all from you, sister. I'm taking over from now on. Well, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Wait a minute. You're going to get in there. Steve, please. All right, you win again. Take that truck out to Wilson's Ranch. Take him out to the ranch. What's happening? Where are they going? Out to the dam, I guess. I'll have news for you in a minute. Randolph, I understand the third buttress is undermined already. Yes. In another hour, the dam will burst. It's not my fault. What can I do? Floods are an act of God. But not this one. You and Wilson are responsible. Why, what do you mean? Well, you told the people of Indian Head that the main part of the dam would hold and not flood their town. You did it because their vote could get you elected state senator. But I really believed that it would hold. I didn't know that Wilson was going to jam the floodgates so that they couldn't be opened. I'd like to believe that, Randolph, but I know you too well. You don't understand. I understand this, that the owners of these ranches were afraid that you'd open the floodgates and destroy their homes and lands. So they destroyed the locks. And now the main dam is going out. And when it does, Indian Head will be wiped out. But we can still save Indian Head. You ordered a truckload of dynamite from Los Angeles. We'll blow the locks, flood the ranches, and pay the owners for the damage done to their land. That's what Wilson was afraid we'd do. So he used every means he could to stop that truck. When it got through, in spite of him, his men grabbed it here in Indian Head. We'll get it away from him. We'll... Don't make me laugh. I talked to him on the phone five minutes ago. He's not interested in the other ranches. He's only interested in himself. He let us have the dynamite as soon as we guarantee him five times what his lands and crops are worth. Harry, you shouldn't have let Wilson send you on that wild goose chase. You're right, Dad, but I did. And Wilson has the dynamite. Uh-huh. And our lands will be saved? And our crops won't be destroyed. But what about the people in Indian Head? Well, Randolph said the dam would hold. Like fools, we believed him. Huh? Dad, the first mistake we made was to believe in Randolph. And the second was to let Wilson get his hands on that dynamite. Well, what do you mean? Wilson isn't the kind of man who's trying to protect his own ranch. He's after something else. So big that he won't even let murder stand in his way. Murder? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've won. You and your friend Wilson don't have to worry anymore. Your fields will remain bone dry. There's no way for us to open the emergency locks. And the dam will go off any minute, wiping out the entire town of Indian Head. I don't believe it. Wait till we hear what Wilson has to say. Wilson? He'll sell you out for exactly five times the price of his land. He's lying. He's not lying. Wilson, you're making a horrible mistake. You won't get away with it. Maybe. But if I don't get what I want for my crops, you don't get the dynamite. That's simple enough, isn't it? Jim, how's it look? Going fast. We've got to relieve the pressure. Keep the shoring gang hard at it. Wilson blew up the emergency store of dynamite they were keeping at the dam. You guys pulled in the picture. Yeah, but not for very long. You guys are always cackling like chickens. 
If you don't shut up, I'll put a beak on you, turn you loose in the barnyard. Can a guy ever get any sleep around this joint? No, you've got to stay awake and worry like I'm worried. You're my helper. <laughs> Say, do you know a girl who lives in this town by the name of Mary Stevens? Sure, her father owns a farm below this one. I suppose she grew up in a reformatory and spends most of her nights in the town jug. No, she sings in the church choir. Must be some tough town, huh? Yeah. Hey, Joe, let me that cap of yours, will you? I want to try something. Sure. Watch this. I guess it's staying up nights at Rexy Guy's aim. Well, you get three out of five. If you win, you get that mug's watch. Yeah? Well, nobody ain't going to get my watch. Sit down, you. Well, he, he said I get three out of five. I'll get it. Thanks. You make a swell retriever. Yeah, nice dog. You're the worst shot I ever did see. Five bucks says you can't do it. It's a bet. There you are. Ah, you're just lucky. Another five bucks says you can't do it again. You got the dough? Yeah. Get a rope. Okay. Well, a, a ringer. Nice going, kid. You did a swell job. Thanks. Yeah, I got the mayor of this one horse town over a barrel. I know. Where are the two men who drove the truck? <laughs> They're inside having the time of their lives. Well, what's going on here? All right, Mary, turn him loose. That bad penny's here again. I had a hunch she was about to. Okay, Pete, tie him up. Mary, you tie him up. Here's a ringer for you. Are you all right, Steve? What's it to you? You wouldn't listen when I told you what comes to trying to reform things, eh? I'm beginning to think you're right, Bill. Yeah. Maybe he was. You're just a chump truck driver. Don't rub it in. Sure, I'll rub it in. You've no right to criticize me. I'm not trying to criticize you. I don't want any part of you. And I don't want any part of you. And I want my bed. I'm enjoying this. You cheap woman or no woman. If I had my hands free, I'd... Wait till the cops get you. It'll be 20 years before you get out. They'll stretch that neck of yours plenty. Plenty. All right. Try and stay awake this time. Mary, keep this gat on. I've got business to attend to. I'm going to give you a break. I'm five bucks up on you. Ten bucks or nothing. I don't want to bet. Sure you do. <laughs> and the man missed. Thanks, we're even. Joe. Yeah. Hold him here. Come on, Steve, let's go. What about me? They've got the key. What do we do? Try to coast down. Shoot, we'll head them off. If there's a turn in this road, we'll never make it. There's one at the foot of the hill. Here they come. 
try to hit us off. Well, let him. I can't stop now. The brakes will burn up. <laughs> They'll commit suicide. We're through. They're on fire. We're almost over the dam. I've got an idea. Open the door. You can't stop. Get out. All right, jump. I made up my mind. What? You fit swell in the garage. Well, what? Come on. They want to see you down at the sheriff's office. I tell you, I can't. All right, I'll tell him. Who was it? It was Davis. And boy, is he sore. What for? Well, you didn't get a receipt for that load. I'll get him a dozen receipts. Yeah, but I got some real bad news. What? Davis wants to deduct the cost of the truck from our bonuses. Well, then we'll owe him money. I, I know, I know. I got it fixed. I, I made a deal with him. What kind of a deal? Well, uh, I got him to agree to not to charge us for the trucks if uh, if we would... If what? Well, if we'd hustle back in and take out a, another emergency haul. I won't go. I'm in the garage business. I'm getting married. And I'm off the tracks for good! We're alone in every coffee pot in half a dozen states. We have to put ourselves to sleep by counting rice's plates. Oh, I want my bird. Instead, we're heading for danger. Oh, 